We know that exercise is good for you and any amount of exercise is better than nothing at all. But there was a new 2023 systematic review of recent studies outlining the training strategies to optimize life expectancy and cardiovascular health. So in this video, we're going to take a look at this study and talk about the most optimal ways to train for longevity. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it. So the study is called Training Strategies to Optimize Cardiovascular Durability and Life Expectancy, published by James O'Keefe and others. And uh, they pretty much took the most recent studies between the years of 2011 to 2022, which is very broad spectrum or uh, a whole lot of studies <laughs> involved. So the first, the most important thing I think that they discovered was that uh, physically active lifestyle and cardiorespiratory fitness itself are the most associated with reduced mortality and being sedentary and being leisurely is associated with increased risk of mortality. They found that moderate physical activity had a greater reduction in mortality and cardiovascular disease mortality than vigorous physical activity, which means that, of course, both moderate as well as vigorous exercise will have a positive effect on reducing mortality risk, but uh, the moderate, the more moderate physical activity you did, the lower your risk of mortality was, whereas the vigorous physical activity plateaued after a certain point. And as you can see from this graph, then the more minutes per week you did of moderate physical activity, which includes things like walking, hiking, and let's say some aspects of swimming or this leather more leisurely physical activity that isn't super intense. Uh, that was like a, in a linear dose dependent manner that the more you did it, the lower your risk of mortality was. So if you did 800 minutes or 850 minutes of moderate physical activity per week, uh, you had a minus 35% in uh, the risk of mortality. In terms of vigorous physical activity, so this includes gym, uh, high intensity cardio, more intense sports, those kind of things. So the benefits of that plateaued around 150 minutes per week. But even if you did 700 minutes of uh, vigorous physical activity, it was still associated with a 17% reduction in all cause mortality. So the 700 minutes still gives you some benefits compared to doing only 100 minutes, for example. So uh, 700 minutes is better than 100 minutes, but there's no like huge difference between 150 to uh, 600 or 700 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week. To get the 700 minutes of vigorous physical activity per week, then you would have to train like an hour and a half every day, which obviously most people aren't. But if you did, let's say one hour of vigorous physical exercise per week, then that puts you around 360 uh, minutes per week and uh, that already is you know is pretty very beneficial still in terms of cardiovascular disease mortality there was still the linear dose dependent matter for the moderate physical activity so the more moderate physical activity you did the lower your cardiovascular disease uh, mortality risk so uh, doing 850 minutes of moderate physical activity reduces your cardiovascular disease mortality by 40 percent with the vigorous physical activity however after 150 minutes or 200 minutes that's where you had the, the lowest risk of uh, cardiovascular disease mortality 15% reduction and after that it started to go into more of like a J curve if you know hormesis then uh, J curve hormesis is that the lower level of uh, let's say activity is increasing your mortality risk if you don't exercise at all if you don't do any vigorous physical activity then that's bad for your longevity but if you exceed a certain threshold if you start to do too much then it actually also starts to increase your cardiovascular disease mortality risk and now I personally think that is very subjective this is an epidemiology study which means that of course they didn't control for many factor factors uh, but uh, I do think that you know there's no point in uh, doing like over an hour of vis vigorous physical exercise every day of the week there's just no point like uh, you do become yeah super fit etc but it doesn't have like uh, longevity benefits beyond what you necessarily need like moderate physical activity still appear appears to be much more important uh, after a certain threshold or like there's no threshold for doing moderate physical activity like the more moderate physical activity you do like an hour and a half every day of walking slash hiking slash yoga or whatever then that is linearly associated with reduced mortality risk but with uh, vigorous physical activity which includes you know, uh, high intensity cardio and uh, more prolonged endurance, then uh, yeah, there is a th certain threshold effect. And I personally think that, yeah, maybe 200 minutes doesn't necessarily apply to a healthy fit individual already who, you know, takes care of their other aspects of health as well. But uh, let's say if you do like 800 minutes, which means an hour and a half 
of uh, vigorous physical activity every day, then that's not necessary. First of all, it's not needed for the longevity benefits, uh, but and it's, it may have like some negative side effects eventually as well. So I personally would recommend keeping the vigorous physical activity between like 150 minutes up until 300 minutes or 350 minutes a day. So if you do like an hour of vigorous physical activity every day, then that puts you into the 360 minute mark. And that's still, you get the 15% reduction pretty much in uh, the cardiovascular disease mortality risk. Run! Next up, they found that the cardiorespiratory fitness or the VO2 max was also associated uh, with reduced mortality risk and increased survival. So the fitter you were, the bigger your VO2 max is, then the lower your mortality risk generally is compared to the least fit. And this is something that I talked about in one of my previous videos as well. VO2 max is actually the biggest or one of the biggest fitness related predictors of uh, mortality. So the people with the lowest tertile of cardiorespiratory fitness have about a 45% higher mortality risk compared to the highest tertile. So there's a almost 50% difference in the mortality and survival rate com between the extremely fit individuals and the least fit individuals. But how do you build the VO2 max mostly? You build VO2 max mostly with moderate physical activities or doing zone 2 cardio. So that's why, you know, the best way to build the uh, VO2 max and cardiorespiratory fitness with the least amount of negative side effects and the least, let's say, wear and tear on your body is to do moderate physical activity, which involves long steady state, moderate zone 2 cardio. So if you don't know zone 2, there's different aerobic zones. Zone 2 is where you're still able able to talk while doing it. So you can still breathe through your nose, you're maintaining aerobic metabolism, you're maintaining fat metabolism, and you can do that for many hours if needed. Doing like a few times a week of 60 minutes of this zone 2 cardio is the perfect like recipe for just improving your cardiorespiratory fitness, your zone 2 cardio, as well as getting your moderate physical activity hours in. So to get up to like the 800 minute per week mark, then yeah, like obviously walking is included here. And based on this study, then the moderate physical activity which reflects zone 2 cardio and increasing your cardiorespiratory fitness is, uh, yeah, actually one of the most important things that I think many people are neglecting. Big mistake. Next up, the study talks about strength training because, yes, strength and muscle are also associated with longevity and reduced mortality quite a lot. And uh, they report about a recent comprehensive meta-analysis where th 30 to 60 minutes per week of strength training produce significant risk reductions of 17% for all cause mortality, 18% for cardiovascular disease events, and 9% for all cancers. So yes, strength training and resistance training is very beneficial for reducing mortality risk and improving longevity. And one of the reasons has to do with uh, the age-related muscle loss or sarcopenia. So if you're inactive, you lose about 3 to 8% of your total muscle mass per decade, which is quite <laughs> massive. So you start to lose the muscle generally around 30s for, let's say, unhealthy people and in your 40s for healthier people and by the time you're 70 or 80 years old then you've lost like one third of your muscle mass that you had in your youth and that sets you up for a lot of potential problems down the line such as frailty hip fractures and uh, metabolic syndrome and weight gain so yeah muscle mass and muscle strength are very important but they also find that uh, there is potential j-shaped benefits to resistance training and strength training so the similar as with the vigorous physical activity that that doing too much is associated with slightly higher uh, risk and they find that the benefits of strength training uh, were completely lost at the durations of around 130 to 140 minutes per week with possible harm at progressively higher doses so as you can see from this graph then yes the uh, around 150 minute mark you start to actually see a relative increased risk wait a minute of course you have to take it with a grain of salt depends on your age depends on your like vitality and depends how you train as well if you're training like one hour every day for an hour and a half of strength training then i do think that yeah that's probably too much you don't need to do like a long session like there's no point in having like three uh three hour sessions unless you are like a power lifter or a competitive athlete and that's a whole, a whole different uh, story but personally what I do is I train at least three times a week maybe four times on some weeks and my sessions aren't that long actually I train for maybe like 45 minutes I don't spend a whole lot of time at the gym like I do have like very long rest periods as well because I am mostly focusing on strength and like powerlifting focus right now so I think that it also depends on yeah like how how you train are you training like one minute rests are you training five minute rests so all those things matter like if you train for an hour 
but you have like five minute rests between sets and you only end up doing like two exercises, then that's not necessarily, you know, I don't think it's going to matter in terms of increasing your mortality risk. But if you do like three hour or one and a half hour workouts five times a week, then that's probably a bit too much because, you know, if you are committing that much time to the strength training, then chances are you're like lacking in some of the cardiorespiratory fitness in my opinion so the takeaway in my opinion is that yes you should still train for like two to four times a week at least there's no point in training more than four times a week but there is a probably increased risk if you train less than two times a week so between two to four times a week is the sweet spot Next up, they're talking about actually other dimensions of fitness, such as balance, flexibility, and body composition. So if you're not able to stand on your one leg for 10 seconds without losing your balance, and you have to put the other foot on the ground, then that's 84% uh, higher mortality risk. The other balance test is the sit to rise test, which we've talked about before as well. So being able to get off the floor uh, with as le least uh, help as possible. So if you have to put your arm on the ground, then that's minus one point. If you get off the ground with no help, then that's 10 points points if you have to put your arm your leg and you have to grab the chair and you have to put your other knee as well then that's you know minus four points every point of assistance that you use subtracts one point <laughs> Next up is specific sports. So tennis had the highest added life expectancy to the people 9.7 years, badminton 6.2 years, soccer 4.7 years, cycling 3.7 years, swimming 3.4 years, jogging 3.2 years, calisthenics 3.1 years and health club activities 1.5 years. Tennis is a sport that may require like more like agility, more balance, more speed, more endurance. So it's a very wide spectrum or broad spectrum sport. You need to think about as well your moves and you need to be very quick. So that's probably the physical aspect of why it has like some benefits. But at the same time, there's also the issue that people who play tennis usually have higher socioeconomic status as well. So like they have more disposable income, they have less stress, they have more money, they have more access to healthcare. So that's the reason why they might have the higher life expectancy as well but there's also the kind of competitiveness and social aspect so yeah social sports social team sports like badminton soccer etc they appear to be quite actually beneficial for longevity so just exercising alone you miss like some of the social aspects so socializing and maintaining social relationships is actually quite important nature therapy so spending time in nature those who spent over 120 minutes per week in nature were 59 percent more likely to report good health and 23% more likely to report well-being compared with those who reported spending no time in nature. So you want to aim for at least two hours per week spent outdoors in natural settings. Gardening is consistently linked to physical and mental health benefits as well as longevity. And lastly, we're going to talk about dog ownership. So individuals who adopt a dog into their home compared to non-dog owners are approximately 14 times more likely than to be recreational walkers and four times more likely to meet current exercise guidelines of 150 minutes per week. So people who get the dog, they're just going to be more physically active, which will help their longevity and health as well. Dog ownership for people who are otherwise living alone was associated with significant all-cause mortality reduction of 33% and cardiovascular disease mortality reduction of 36%. So if you're a person who lives alone, getting the dog is actually quite <laughs> beneficial not just because of the physical exercise aspect but also the socializing aspect so if you're living alone then the dog is going to provide you with like companionship loneliness and unhappiness sadness all those things are actually very dangerous or very damaging to your mental health as well as longevity so humans are social creatures and uh, having a dog for an elderly person is like almost life-saving in a lot of ways because it's going to force them to be more physically active and it also provides a company people living in multiple person households so people who aren't alone also benefited from dog ownership with less impressive but still highly significant reductions in risks of all-cause mortality and cardiovascular mortality 11 percent and 15 percent reductions respectively so 11 percent reduction in all-cause mortality and 15 percent reduction in cardiovascular disease mortality so even if you are not alone even if you have a family then having a dog is still beneficial because you are forced to go for walks with the dog probably so if you have a dog and you need to walk it several times a day then that's gonna contribute to the moderate physical activity that you have to accumulate over the entire week so going for longer walks and going for walks several times a day for people who otherwise wouldn't do it 
thanks to the torque, is uh, yeah beneficial for longevity because of that reason you're gonna just get more steps in basically he stole john wick's car and uh killed his dog so there you have it this is the study of course there are some nuances that we discussed in the study if you exercise let's say four times a week with weights an hour or an hour and a half per session then that's i don't think that's necessarily going to increase your mortality especially if you're young etc it's more important in my opinion to accumulate the moderate physical activity than it is to accumulate the vigorous physical activity you don't need to grind it out every day to benefit your longevity and based on this study then grinding it out too much too frequently is actually it's going to have diminishing returns so if there's something that you grind out then let it be moderate physical activity which includes walking hiking gardening etc and doing zone 2 cardio that's what you want to accumulate but other than that thanks for watching this video make sure you click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay optimized stay empowered